Calimera, everyone. Today, our first guest is not only a successful woman, but a leader. She works to help other women advance in their professional goals and promote their businesses while developing vibrant mentorship and employment programs through her non-for-profit organization, Hellenic Professional Women. We are very happy to have with us founder and president of Hellenic Professional Women, Maria Fradis, and accompanying her is secretary of the board, Costadina Papayuriu. Good morning and welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us and congratulations on this wonderful organization, Maria. Thank you, Yana. I mean, you have brought together all the Greek American women. Uh, you have done this within um, four years, I think? A little bit more than four years, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you to bring all these Greek American women together. In 2006, I started my own risk management insurance consulting firm and I started networking and I was looking to grow my business uh, but also to meet other successful professional women and I joined a few organizations and I was looking to meet other Greek American women and I wasn't and um, I was very disturbed and I I got a friend. Where are all these Greek American professional <laughs> women? I want to meet Greek American. Right. So then I thought maybe uh, if I could find an organization um, uh, just for Greek American women, and I couldn't find that either. So uh, I was talking to my friend, um, Kathy Giuliani, and she says, Maria, go, uh, go for it. Uh, start the organization and I will help you. And in 2007, we did that. We um, basically, uh, we were meeting uh, for coffee at a diner. It was just initially just uh, uh, me and uh, Kathy and then other women joined us and in 2009 we incorporated. That's amazing and now how many women come to your events? Uh, Approximately? We have um, different events throughout the year, signature events we have um, about a hundred women attend, uh, smaller events uh, we have between 30 and 50 women attend. That's wonderful I mean I, I was fortunate enough to come to one of them that's what Right. you know, inspired me to bring you ladies here. Tell us a little bit about uh, the Greek American uh, professional women. What have you found uh, during your time with this organization? Uh, I think we have a lot of successful uh, Greek American women uh, in different industries. And uh, what I'm trying to, uh, to do is um, have those successful Greek American women be mentors for the younger uh, generation, uh, the college uh, age um, men and women, as well as older women who are looking to change careers, um, guide them in uh, finding the career that they're looking for. So, I mean, you touch upon many topics on each uh, on every event. What, is, what are some of the most successful topics uh, that you found had a good turnout? And what are the needs that you're feeling uh, uh, women are having today, professional women are having today? Um, I think we all struggle um, to uh, juggle our personal as well as our business um, our careers and it's it's a daily struggle especially when you're raising your children and you have um, a career that is very demanding uh, that is a that is a very very big uh, struggle that every professional um, not just Greek but every woman faces today one of the things I love about your organization is that you are um, attracting the new generation. Cosadina has been part of your group for the past year. Cosadina, how do you feel to be part of this group and, and what do you feel is important about this group? I'm honored and privileged to be a part of the group and to be on the board. I've met a lot of influential women who, um, who really just do a lot for the community and who, who try to help other women rise as well. And I think that that's really important and it's probably at the foundation of what Maria was trying to get at. And I think that in the short span of a, you know, the last five, six years, the organization has been in place. I think it's already done that. It's already done such a great job to, to make women you know, connect and, and to help each other to rise and, and do better. Um, what are some of the things that you've taken from this organization? What are some of the things that have helped you in your career as an attorney? Have, who is mentoring you? Everybody. Um, you know, I'm, I'm recently married, so, you know, speaking to a lot of different women about married life or about, you know, the thought about having children and balancing our professional career as well as a family. 
I think that was really important. I've had a couple of conversations um, with a lot of women who, who can do that and can balance the family life and the professional life. So when one joins the Hellenic Professional Women's Association, what are some of the programs that they'll be able to benefit from? Uh, we have uh, several programs. One is our employment uh, program where every member has an opportunity to uh, post the resumes on the website and it can be viewed by other members. Also, if uh, you have um, the members who have openings, uh, they can also post them on our website and, uh, and other members have the opportunity to uh, view them and apply and see if you know, they can uh, get themselves an interview. Well, this is great. I mean, and tell us some of the topics that you have at your events. Um, it's, you know, we have two signature events a year. One of them is the Korea Forum. Um, we just had one recently, the, uh, the Cornell Club, and you were one of the panelists, um, and we were very happy to have you. I was very happy to come. Um, what we have done in the past, and of course every year is a little different, um, in addition to having a panel of successful women that talk about the, uh, the profession and the struggles and how they were able to achieve uh, uh, success, we have workshops on resume writing and interviewing skills as well as image uh, consulting. consulting. So um, women and members who attend, they're able to benefit uh, from these uh, workshops. Have you had uh, uh, any um, women uh, that have moved, uh, migrated from Greece here looking for work? Uh, yeah, uh, we have. Actually, I have a very good, um, one of our members, um, Basically, uh, I remember her, Menya Skraki. She came from Greece a few years ago, and at the beginning, she came to a few of uh, our meetings, and she was, she says, "Oh, you know, I just came from Greece. I'm looking for a job. I really don't know what to do." And my advice to her was to um, basically um, um, just become, uh, be a, a mentee, find a mentor in our group, and. Uh, so she can be guided and we're able to match her. She filled out an application uh, and we were able to match her with uh, one of our members and she was able to get an internship with an HR firm. Um, a few years uh, ago, uh, yeah, a few years ago, uh, she now happens to be working for that HR firm. Oh, good for and, her. Yes. Congratulations. And we, yeah, she, she's a success story. She were, um, she started as an uh, unpaid internship and it turned into a full-time job. I've hired a couple of my interns. I mean, you, you know, it is hard to get a job, but uh, what you're doing is wonderful. Thank you. And you're helping uh, Greek women uh, network with other women mm -hmm. and hopefully get a job. And you're telling them how to get a job and how, how to support, you know, you're supporting them. Um, how can someone get involved? Where can they uh, reach out? Oh, well, they can go on our website, um, HellenicProfessionalWomen.org. Um, they can become a member. I encourage uh, women to um, come to our events and meet other members. I mean, I, uh, I get a lot of emails, and um, they are asking me, oh, find me a mentor. And I said, that's wonderful, um, but I think the first thing that you should do is come to our events and meet other you know, women and... Uh, it doesn't happen so easily. I mean, yeah. people want an easy way out. They do. There is no easy way out. You're gonna have to work at it. You have to meet people. You're going to have to network. It is, it's all about networking. Uh, it just, some women, uh, you know, they just come because they wanna be inspired by other women. They don't come to, because they're looking for a job or they're looking for a mentor. Uh, or they're looking to grow their business. They just come to socialize and be with other, you know, smart, successful women. Uh, because at the end of the day, when you go home, you know, um, you think about those women you met and you say, oh my God, you know, she's so successful. How did she do it? And I wanna, you know, get to know her and, you know, just learn about her struggles and how she went about to, you know, achieve the success that she has. Yes. And I think it's, it, this is what it's all about. Yeah. To, to networking. Cosalina, would you I, like to add to that? I completely agree, and I think that it's really important for people to be involved and, and to take those initiatives in order to get to meet others. Um, you know, just What's your message for the new generation? I, essentially, it's that. It's, um, you know, take those affirmative steps and 
go meet people, you know, join an organization, join our organization. We'll be more than happy to, to have you. Um, so they can we'll log on to? HellenicProfessionalWomen.org. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're very happy that you are empowering women, Greek women, and all you ladies out there that need some empowerment, reach out right here to wonderful ladies, Maria Fradis and Costadina, uh, Papa Giorgio, are doing great things, and we are very happy that you gave us uh, this advice. And we hope to see more of you, and we will be following your events. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are going to cut to a quick commercial break and meet two more successful, beautiful, very talented artists when we come back right here at Calimera, USA. On the island of Antiparos, at the heart of the Aegean, Gaia produced an exquisite organic olive oil in limited edition, which traveled all the way to the U.S. The sales of Antiparos olive oil will finance 10 new and innovative Greek companies to grow. Buy today your bottle in reinspiregreece.com and support the Greek youth to move forward. And now we have two special guests, Eleni and Susanna Vujukli, two Greek world music performers who are characterized by their authentic, intense, and explosive interpretations of the potential of human voice as an innate musical instrument. Singing in more than 20 languages, they have performed in both ancient and national theaters, as well as concerts and international festivals. Two beautiful women from Thraki. Mm -hmm. And sisters, may I add. We are very happy to be here with you. Thank you, thank you. We're very happy to have you here. Welcome to New York. Thank you. Uh, my God, you've had such a, an extensive career already. You're two young, uh, very talented artists, and uh, we love your music. And you have now brought your music for the first time to the American audience. Tell us a little bit about your performance that uh, just happened. On Friday, the 1st of November, we had the great opportunity to present our work in the American audience and especially uh, at the people of the business industry uh, in a prestigious place such as Carnegie Hall. Um, this uh, opportunity, for this opportunity, we would like to thank uh, Mr. Kostas Kadzoglu and Dr. Leong Ying, uh, who um, offered us this opportunity, as I say, to present our work. Uh, everything went super, we are very satisfied uh, and uh, hopefully we will come again and uh, make more things. How was the experience, Susanna? It was a great experience. Um, we wanted to see how the American audience uh, are going to listen to our music and uh, I think that all these common elements that uh, all the world music has uh, touches also the American audience because we only have experience especially in Greece and Europe and it was very nice for us um, a great experience and uh, uh, we would like to uh, make it happen in US yes yes you will definitely make it happen in the USA <laughs> because uh, the United States loves world music and they're very open and uh, we heard this wonderful things about your performance. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. Your sisters, you come from Thraki, you were born and raised in a very cultured home and environment. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. We are sisters, so what we do, we do it from a, a very uh, young age, uh, since we were children. We first uh, learned uh, music and then we learned the alphabet. <laughs> Uh, we were raised in a home that we were um, listening to many kinds of music, from classical music to rock music, uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, <laughs> uh, from Indian or um, Ima Sumak, Um Kalthum. We had a, a very global uh, culture. Yes. <laughs> culture right. We also lived two years in uh, England, uh, where our mother did her doctorate, so uh, PhD, yes. So we went to school, to multi-ethnic school. Oh, wonderful. So there were uh, Chinese children, German children. We were the Greek. Yeah. Yeah. You were the Greek. Uh, so the, uh, the, th the music we do came very normally for us. Very natural. Yes, very natural. Yeah. And Eleni, you both, uh, both of Susanna and Eleni, you both speak 20 languages. Uh, we sing. You sing 20, 20 yeah, not speak. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
uh, we understand uh, what we sing in our songs, but uh, of course we don't speak so many languages. Uh, although languages are like um, musical instruments, if you um, begin uh, learning one, it is more easy to learn the second and the third. Yeah. Uh, now we, uh, in this uh, repertoire we have, uh, we speak, um, we sing in over 20 languages and dialects, because in Greece we have many dialects. Now, for example, you, you mentioned that uh, you touch the, the human soul with different dialects. Do you want to elaborate a little bit about how you create music and how you use different dialects to touch different, uh, I guess, uh, how, bring out different feelings? Yes. Mm -hmm. The first thing we we want we want with my, our music is to be moved uh, to move us first and then to sing it to the audience. Um, so we pick the songs that we want to say with this um, principle. Let's yes, say. principle. Um, no matter what language it is, we can uh, work on it and uh, sing it. And uh, especially the language is um, with the music. Fun. The pronunciation is part of the music. Yeah. We see it like one. That's, we, that's why we prefer to sing in the original language each song. Um, we like very much uh, songs that has to do with ceremony in uh, ceremonies. Yeah. Ceremonies, mm -hmm. yes, in all uh, the different cultures and different yeah. cultures. Sorry, uh, maybe with the weddings, traditions, different yes. traditions, yes. different. Every country has its own uh, yeah. ceremony music mm -hmm. for yes. different uh, festivals or events, and yeah. yes, mm -hmm. and we sing from a Greek tradition and especially rebetiko, rebetic music. Uh, and the uh, Greco-phone uh, villages of South Italy, uh, Mediterranean, Father Portuguese, Italian Cis uh, from Sicily, all this Mediterranean, uh, to American blues, because we see music as one. And now you were raised in a, in a part of Greece that uh, had a lot of Balkan influence. Yes. yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit how Thraki uh, dif is different from uh, different areas of Greece? Thraki is um, in uh, North uh, Greece and it is a place that uh, has many uh, hearings from the Balkan and from uh, uh, Turkey and um, uh, at the Balkan tradition uh, there is a big voice tradition and this is very interesting for us because we are interested in such kind of music when um, we can make a uh, lot of things with uh, the human voice. Uh, so um, it was a very good um, school for us to... to a good inspiration. Yes. yes. To do what you're doing. And now you have a CD, uh, you've made a track, a, yes. a 10 tracks. Yes, it is our no, second, second record. Second record, yes. bravo. Mm. Uh, to be safe, it's called To Be Safe. It's a, a half in English. Some songs are in English and some are in Greek. Uh, we say that it is a tribute to the pedatonic scale. Mm. A pedatonic scale is a scale that every human being can understand. And that's... A, what does that mean exactly? It's a scale. Um, you can a scale of sounds? Yes, of music. And uh, maybe you can see that Greek uh, polyphonic from Aprius, it's pedatonic. Blues are pedatonic. Rebetica is pedatonic. Chinese music is very pedatonic. So it's a, a, a common element in every uh, country and culture. Mm -hmm. culture yes. Um, and this uh, record is on the pedatonic scale and it's like Rebetico blues. And yeah. it has our own compositions. Mm -hmm. It is the first time that we uh, take a, a release an album with our own compositions and we are very proud of it because it is uh, our own production also. Bravo. Oh. And where can they find your music? Uh, on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, from our site, website. Uh, that is uh, www.vukli.gr. www.vukli.gr. I'm sure you'll be all seeing it on the screens right now. You guys have been, you know, you've performed in so many places. You've done so many things. You've performed in so much music. So what are your plans now? Our plans is to 
uh, spread our music all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, Eleni and Susanna Vujukli, two very talented Greek ladies who are taking the world by storm with their music. You can find it on their website, www.vujukli.gr or on Amazon.com. Look out for them. Thank you again, ladies. And we're going to leave you off with some clips of uh, some of their performances. And we're going to cut to a commercial break and be right back right here on Calimera USA. Καινούριο κατάστημα στην καρδιά της Αστόριας. Τσακίρις Μαλάς. Τα καλύτερα και τα πιο μοντέρνα υποδήματα άριστης ποιότητας από Ελλάδα, Ιταλία και Ισπανία. Το κατάστημα που εξυπηρετεί κάθε ανάγκη της σύγχρονης γυναίκας και του άντρα. Τσακίρις Μαλάς. 3143 Steinway Street, Αστόρια. Καθώς επίσης στο 7111 Austin Street, Forest Hills και 1206 Kings Highway, Brooklyn. Λοιπόν, έχουμε έρθει στο Brooklyn να δούμε και του Έλληνε εδώ στο Brooklyn που είναι καταπληκτικοί. Και η κυρία Πολίνα Μητυλινέο έχει ανοίξει ένα καταπληκτικό μαγαζί που λέγεται Something Greek, right on 76th Street and 3rd Avenue. Σωστά. Yeah. Και έχει μεγαλώσει το Brooklyn. Η Πολίνα, μα πει λίγο για το Brooklyn. Uh, το Brooklyn είναι πάρα πολύ ωραία περιφέρεια. Μεγάλωσα εδώ πέρα. Έχει, είχε πάρα πολύ ελληνισμό. Αλλά τώρα όλοι φεύγουν. Άλλοι πάνε στα Νάιλεν, άλλοι πάνε New Jersey. Uh, και εσείς μείνατε. Εγώ έμεινα εδώ πέρα και εγώ έμεινα εδώ γιατί μου αρέσει, μεγάλωσα εδώ, από μικρή είμαι εδώ. Και έχει, έχετε κρατήσει την ελληνική την παράδοση, γι' αυτό ανοίξατε αυτό το καταπληκτικό, καταπληκτικό μαγαζί ε, που έχει φτιάξει, έχουν φτιάξει η γη σου. Μάλιστα, ναι. η γη μου είναι στο construction και οι τέσσερι, οι λεβέντες μου <laughs> και ο φίλος τους μαζί ναι. που είναι σαν παιδί μου κι αυτός και έχουν φτιάξει αυτό το μαγαζί εδώ πέρα και έχουν business στο Manhattan. Πέντε παιδιά λοιπόν και η κυρία Πολίνα έπρεπε να, να μαγειρεύει συνέχεια λοιπόν και αγαπάει τον κόσμο και γι' αυτό και κάνει πάρα πολλές ωραίες συνταγές. Και σήμερα τι θα μας δείξεις Πολίνα. Α, θα σας φτιάξω το shrimp santorini που είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο πιάτο. Σπαρτιάτσα βέβαια, αλλά δεν πειράζει, θα μας κάνει η santorini πιάτο. Ναι, είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο πιάτο και αγαπάει όλος ο κόσμος. Ωραία, για να δούμε τι υλικά πρέπει χρειαζόμαστε. Λοιπόν, βάζουμε λάδι. Να, ω, ωραία. Okay, λίγο λαδάκι, α, λίγο σκορδάκι. Τώρα το σκορδο κόβουμε... Α, το κόβουμε πολύ μικρό, στο blender μέσα, αν θέλετε, ή στο chopper, όπου θέλετε. Βάζουμε λίγο parsley. Μαϊντανός. Ριγανούλα, ριγανούλα. Okay. Βάζουμε πιπεράκι. A dash. Αλατάκι πάλι. Με το μάτι. Dash, yeah. Λέβαια σας φαίνεται η καλή μαγείρισα. <laughs> και το βάζουμε Εμπειρία. πάνω και το τσιγαρίζουμε. Για πόση ώρα το τσιγαρίζουμε. Ε, Ένα-δύο λεπτά. Μέχρι που να πάρει ωραίο χρώμα το σκορδάκι. Ρίγνουμε τις γαρίδες μας. Και τις τσιγαρίζουμε λίγο. 
na parang yung tomatati Ina na poli yung rocchiato Che poli e polo Che nostimo Και τελικά οι γαρίδε πόση ώρα πρέπει να τι μαγειρεύουν. Δεν θέλουν πολύ οι γαρίδε, γιατί άμα τι μαγειρεύσει πάρα πολύ, ε, γίνονται πολύ καπ. Πολύ σκληρέ. Ναι. Δεν θέλουν πολύ χρόνο οι γαρίδε. Είναι και σκληρή. Μέχρι να πάρει αυτό το, το, το χρωματάκι. Ναι, το... Μέχρι να πάρει το χρωματάκι, το σωμό. Θα βάλουμε και άστρο κρασάκι που δίνει ωραίο flavor. Τώρα το καίμε με κρασί. Το σβήνουμε με το κρασί. Μάλιστα. Το σβήνουμε με το κρασί. Η γαρίδα έχει πάρει το χρώμα της. Τώρα θα βάλουμε, θα κάνει σκεκίσια σάλτσα και θα βάλουμε τη σάλτσα μέσα. Έχω ρίξει εδώ κρεμμυδάκι, σκορδάκι. Α, τώρα έχω κάνει φρέσκια ντομάτα. Έχω βάλει μέσα κρεμμυδάκι, σκόρδο, αλάτι, πιπέρι, ρίγανη και μαϊντανό. Και θα το ρίξουμε μέσα. και θα το σιγαρίσουμε λίγο και στο μυρίδι πολύ ωραίο, είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο πιάνω και γρήγορο δεν θέλει πολύ και τι μας έμεινε τώρα θα βάλουμε πάνω φέτα φέτα, την έχω έτοιμη εδώ ρίχνετε λίγο φέτα μέσα Τρεις με τέσσερις κουταλιές. Λίγη φέτα. Του δίνει ωραία γεύση. Και τελικά με το μάτι πόσα λεπτά, Πολίνα. Ε, θέλει κάπου πέντε λεπτά για να γίνει αυτό, γιατί η ντομάτα είναι έτοιμη. Μόνο η γαρίδα να γίνει, όλα τα άλλα είναι έτοιμα. Παίρνω ένα πιάτο τώρα και βάζω με ριζάκι μέσα. Το έχω φτιάξει, είναι φρέσκο και βάζουμε τις γαρίδες μας από πάνω Είναι ένα πάρα πολύ ωραίο πιάτο και νόσχημο okay. Τώρα είναι έτοιμο, το έχω έτοιμο Βλέπετε ότι γίνει πάρα πολύ ωραίο, έχει ωραία μυρωδιά. Παίρνουμε μια κουτάλα και βγάζουμε. Τώρα θέλω δύο κουτάλε. Ναι. Όχι ωραίο, φανταστικό. Είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο πιάτο. Μπορείτε να το δοκιμάσετε τώρα. Και τι λέγεται Σαντορινέο, είναι η Σαντορινέα... Ναι, είναι από τη Σαντορινέα. Συνταγή, α. Ωπα, φανταστικό, παιδιά. Βάζουμε και λίγο μαϊντανό απάνω και το σερβίρουμε. Ωπα, τι φανταστικό που φαίνεται, πολύ να... Είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο, θα το δοκιμάσετε και θα μου πείτε. Ε, βέβαια θα το δοκιμάσουμε. Πάρα πολύ. Όλοι θα το δοκιμάσουμε. Ελάτε να δοκιμάσετε. Ωπα, μοσχομυρίζει, παιδιά. κακό. Οι τηλεθεατές δεν μπορούν να το μυρίσουνε, αλλά μυρίζει όπου η ντομάτα είναι... Είναι όλα φρέσκα, σπιτίσια, mm. μαρθένο, ελαιόλαδο, όλα πολύ, είναι φρέσκο. Απρόβως δεν έχω βάλει κιλά σε αυτήν την εκπομπή που τρώω συνέχεια έξω με τις φίλες μου, ναι. τις ωραίες ελληνίδες που μαγειρεύουν ακόμα το παραδοσιακό ελληνικό. Πολύ να μου ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Και εγώ σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Και να έρχεστε στο Something Greek here in Brooklyn, support the Greeks. Έτσι είναι. Έτσι Πρέπει είναι. να κάνουμε support του Έλληνε εδώ. Να, να, να κρατήσουμε τον ελληνισμό, έτσι δεν είναι. Έτσι είναι, έτσι είναι. Να κρατήσουμε τον ελληνισμό και να έρχονται εδώ πέρα να τρώνε όλα τα καλά πιάτα που φτιάχνουμε. Είναι νόστιμα και σπιτικά. Μπράβο. Νούγκρι TV from Brooklyn.
Homeric Tours. Πάντα κοντά στην ομογένεια, πάντα με χαμηλότερε τιμέ. Homeric Tours. Το γραφείο παράδοση που επί σειρά ετών φροντίζει τον Έλληνα ταξιδιώτη με υπευθυνότητα και του προσφέρει ασφάλεια και άνεση στα ταξίδια του. Homeric Tours. Το Α και το Ω για τα ταξίδια σα. Για πληροφορίε και κρατήσει θέσεων, τηλεφωνήστε στο 212-753-1100. And we're back with Costa Cocoli here once again to show us some wonderful exercises and give us some tips on how to manage pain and avoid it. Costa, good morning again. Welcome back. Good morning. And what are you going to show us today? We're going to learn more stuff about getting rid of uh, uh, pain. And I think Costa wants to focus on lower back pain today. Lower back pain or back pain as we know it. Um, a couple of exercises, both um, some that you can do while seated at, at, your, at work or seating at, at your computer and a couple of while you're on your, on your back sitting down. So I love Laying this, down. I love this stuff because you know, me personally, I have lower back problem from a car accident, so I would love to, to learn some things. So, Gosamu, what do you want me to do? We, we, do we do a warm up just like we start any exercise program? A little bit of a warm up on a treadmill or walking and stretching? You don't have to, not oh. for these not minor for these exercise, kind of exercises. Uh, exercises. Okay. Of course, in a perfect world, uh, warming up and stretching before exercise is the best thing, but when you time constraint, um, some of these that you can do while you're sitting are the best. Okay, guys, so take time, and he used the word, he said time. People don't take enough time to take care of their bodies and their health. And we are going to take the time today to show you what you should be taking the time for. And these are some exercises that will help fight lower back pain. Great. So in a seated position, uh, sometimes our, tight, our back gets very tight. What I want you to do is sit a little more to the edge, uh, feet and knees apart. Yep, turning to the side would be good. And I want you to stretch down and try to reach to the floor to stretch your low back. Okay, and, and now should my arms be between my legs or outside? Between your legs. Okay. So we're doing this? Yep, and now try to hang your head a little bit to kind of get a good stretching of the low back. And you hold these stretches, all stretches that I'm going to show, show today, you, you hold for about 15 to 30 seconds uh, depending on how much time you have. Wow, that feels really good. Good. I love that. Oh wait, so how many times do we do this? So you do that about three times on a, si times. On a sitting. A couple three of times for 15 to 20 15 seconds. 15 to 30 seconds. 15 to 30 seconds. So you could do this also in your office if you feel like a little bit of tightening or sitting at home a lot. So let me do this. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. So we do that. Come we hold it for 15 up. to 30 seconds and do it for three times. Yes. One more time. <laughs> All right, that's good. good. And then similar to a pelvic tilt, when you do lay down, I'll show it to you in a, in, okay. in, in a second, but I want you to kind of do it when you're sitting down okay, in the chair. Mm -hmm. So really in a seated position, of course, if you have perfect posture, I want you to kind of round your back fo forward, kind of okay. tilting forward, and then tilting it backwards, which is the opposite Oh, way. okay, so like, yeah. so like up. So sitting up and tightening the muscles in your back, and then, and then contracting, tightening your abdominal muscles. So you can feel it not only throughout your low back, but you can feel it throughout your entire so spine. We're doing this, and we're contracting up. So how many times should we do this? So those, you want to hold it for five seconds in each position and do it about 10 times. And up for five seconds with tight abdominal area and down. Collapsing downwards for a stretch. And well. we do it for about eight repetitions. Eight to 10. Oh, that's great, eight to 10 repetitions. So there you go. In the office or home, eight to 10 repetitions, for the pelvis and the abdominal area. We gotta tighten that abdominal area that definitely helps the lower back pain to tighten it up and also get rid of a lot of the fat in that area because a lot of overweight, over, overweight people do suffer from lower back pain because of all the weight on their stomach. And, Absolutely. and it's a, there's it's so many uh, uh, other uh, causes of um, problems that, uh, that will happen to you if you do not watch that weight in the circumference of your body, that area. And so we wanna be careful of that. So we wanna do some weight loss exercises for that. And then these exercises to tighten the abdominal area and to stretch out the lower back area for your Great. lower back pain. Very good. Yes. All right, moving on. We're gonna do now some exercises on the floor with Costa. All right, Costa Muso, again, pay attention because if you have lower back problems, these are perfect exercises for you. So also notice how I'm going down, I'm bending my knees and I'm sitting, okay? 
So what would you like? I want to you to lay on your back there. Lay all the way on my back. And with your knees bent, feet, feet flat on the floor. Um, yeah, exactly like that. Uh, the first exercise I want you doing is sort of like a t pelvic tilt that I had you do in the chair. Uh -huh. So really t tilting your pelvis backwards, trying to flatten your back just like that. So there's no torque here. The pelvis is tilted upwards. And then the opposite way, of course, if none of the, if this other way does not hurt, you can also include that. So tilting forward, arching your back the opposite way. Oh, the opposite way, way. so yes. So you're talking so about like So pushing this. forward that way, creating a little bit of an arch So there's there. an arch here, so then we go down. So then tilting, tilting up. Tilting back that way. Yep. And, then and then tilting, tilting up. Yep, forward, yeah. Up okay, forward, so forward. causing a torque right here. And how many times should we do this exercise? Same thing as the seated one, 10 times. 10 and you times. Hold, hold each position for five for seconds. For five seconds. Okay, very good. Yeah. Um, the other one would be a lower trunk rotation. Mm -hmm. If you put your knees together, okay. um, you can pretty much control your legs dropping side to side for a stretch there. Again, you hold for five seconds and come on to the other side. And you bring it back to the center. It, bring it back to the center and then and bring it here. slowly lower it down that And our arms well. should be just like here? Down to your side. Down to the sides. Mm -hmm. Nice and relaxed. So here we go, rotation, trunk rotation. Trunk rotation, rotate to the left. Let and it hold. hang for about five seconds, bring it up, and do, and letting them go, drop to the right. And to the right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. What but, about, but, and yeah. yeah, sure. One more back, um, back stretch, which is very good for pretty much everybody, would be really just pulling your knees into your chest. Oh, nice, right here. Yeah, right in there, and again. And that releases, that feels really good. That opens up the back. Oh, wow. Um, and releases some of the muscles and some of the tension in your low back. There you go. So this you hold for about 30 seconds also. You do it about two to three it. times. Three times. And um, and that's about it. And that's about it for today. Very good. If you want more um, more exercises on the low back um, or the upper back, um, go see your uh, local physical therapist. And there you have it. Lower back exercise for today. Costa, help me out. <laughs> and we will see you here again Thank next you. time. Thank you, John. Commercial break. We'll be right back. Εργαστήριο επαγγελματικών ενδυμάτων Not Just Flag Inc. Διαθέτουμε για την επιχείρησή σα τα αρτιότερα ενδύματα εργασία, με υφάσματα άριστη ποιότητα και ραφή που αντέχει στον χρόνο. Δημιουργούμε αθλητικέ εμφανίσει ομάδων, στολέ συλλόγων και σχολείων, στη διάθεση τη ομογένεια με 30 χρόνια εμπειρία και τι καλύτερε τιμέ αγορά. Θα μα βρείτε στο 37 West Serraview Avenue, Staten Island και τηλέφωνο 347-886-0220. Welcome back, everyone. I have two lovely ladies here with me. I have uh, my good friend, Antula Katsimatidi, who's brought a wonderful friend, and we're going to learn how to get organized quickly, easily, and with a stylish flair. And what better way to learn it all from one of the best professional organizers in New York City, Angela Cantarellis, founder and owner of AK Organizing. Angela Cantarellis has helped many clients achieve their organizing goals and restore a sense of order and well-being in their lives. Ladies, welcome to my show. I'm very happy to have you guys here. Thank you. And Antula's always calling me saying, Jan, I got this great topic. I'm like, let's go, let's bring it in. We want to hear about it. So organizing closets, oh my God. I mean, I mean, everyone at home right now is like, yeah, I know, I have to organize my closet. Mm -hmm. But also, I have to say, in today in, in New York, organizing mm -hmm. closets in the space of Manhattan is mm -hmm. very hard. Right. I mean, we don't get that space that, you know, I had growing up because I grew up in Queens. I had closets, we had, you know, floors, we're up and down. In the city, you have a room and a closet. How do you organize that? I know you have a professional company, people hire you to do that. Right, it's a great question. And um, I was reading some statistics. There are tons of statistics because there are always studies being done on um, organizing and how it affects people's lives. And one of the studies found that organizing is more satisfied, like, uh, doing organizing is more satisfying than sex. People resport, reported <laughs> that organizing something in their home is more satisfying than sex That's at times. But the truth is, I mean, people say that when you're unorganized, it's lacking something else psychologically uh, in you. So what, it, what is, since you're the professional here, why are people unorganized and why are other people organized? 
uh, whether one is organized or not organized is a manifestation of what's going on in their lives, right? So people can be disorganized because they are simply too busy, right? I work with a lot of moms. Right. I work with a lot of moms. They have careers or they're entrepreneurs, mompreneurs. So one of the reasons people are busy, um, people uh, are disorganized is because they're simply busy, right? And then another reason is um, hoarding, which, um, and we've all seen the reality TV shows. Right. And yeah. that is a mental illness. So somewhere what kind of, what is in between. That about? So it was recently added to the DSM, or just about um, to be added to the uh, Diagnost Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And um, it is part of the OCD spectrum. Mm -hmm. So when someone is uh, obsessive compulsive, they have a really tough time letting go of things. So Interesting. that's, yeah. Antulam, how is your closet? How are your like closets? How my closets um, are jam-packed because mm -hmm. I think I'm the on the lower end of that spectrum <laughs> where I can't seem to get rid of things, mm -hmm. um, but I'm working on it. Give us some before and afters on some of your work mm -hmm. and, and what you've done and when you went in there, mm -hmm. how it was, and what you did mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one thing that comes up often, right, we talked about being very busy, and then some people are chronically disorganized, mm -hmm. so we're talking about that spectrum again. So. Uh, in that continuum, then there's the hoarding. So it depends on where people are in the continuum. So if I work, getting back to a mom that I'm working with, um, she's like, oh my God, I just had my second child and everything just exploded, yeah. right? We need our lives back. We need our living room back. We need help organizing this. And then some other things got um, disorganized in the off. It's just a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Let's see some of your samples because I know you, brought, you. We have some mm -hmm. pictures here. Uh, we, uh, let's have the control room show one of the before pictures. Tell me about this client. So it's one of six closets. So I had already had a long history of working with this particular client, and with this, I can see why. Right. <laughs> and with this part, and she's absolutely lovely. I have to say, in case you're watching. Um, <laughs> um, so what happened here, and this I think was one of the last closets, it was the last frontier because people don't really think that they need to worry about the linen closet, but the linen closet here became a catch-all. Then you want to keep your linen closet clean, right? Yes, you want linens. Super, yeah. super clean, gonna, your linens. That's my next question about right? what, what did you, because I know that you categorize, we like to categorize mm -hmm. things when we're organizing. Right. That's one of the first things of organization. Mm -hmm. So you took this linen closet that is a mm -hmm. for everything closet, and what did you right. make it? Right, so it became a linen closet again. So what oh, we did was we nice. reclaimed oh. the linen closet. And the first thing, um, what you want to think, what you want to remember is the space method. So we want to sort, we want to purge, we want to assign a place, a, a home for um, whatever it is that we're organizing. Then the C is containerize. And then E, because my colleague wanted to create a word, she made it's equalized, but it's basically to maintain. Oh, I like that. So the first thing we did with this closet is we took everything out. And uh, once we, in the purging phase, we want to make decisions about, are we going to donate it? Are we just going to throw it out? Mm. Are we going to recycle it? Do we have a friend who might need it? Yeah. You know, I always say, re-gift without guilt. Athula, give us Love some that. samples of, of, of where can we donate some things. Oh, you know, there's plenty of places. I mean, besides mm -hmm. your typical Goodwill, now I feel like there's containers almost on every corner for things like mm -hmm. clothing, right? But there's also wonderful avenues on the web, on the web about there's something called free cycle, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. m what I think is junk and I don't need anymore, someone else might need it. And so therefore there's a swap or there's a barter that goes on. Mm -hmm. I'm a major fan of, of um, free cycle. And then there's Craigslist. I mean, you could probably sell some of your stuff. Mm -hmm. eBay and then, maybe? eBay even, mm -hmm. yeah. And then the good old fashioned. Hey, you need this? Yard sale. <laughs> or friends. A yard hey, sale. Or give it to your sister or brother. Give it to your sister or brother. <laughs> you know, I mean, any, there's so many avenues. I mean, have a, I, I had, three yard sales when I first moved into my home. And I had to like take everything and fit it into my home and two of my friends joined and they brought their things and we made a day of it. So make a day of it. Mm -hmm. Make a day of it. Good. You know. So Angela, going back to you. So you took the closet, you made a linen closet. Let's see some more examples of some of the work mm -hmm. that you've done that you've changed people's lives as organization. And what's this now? <laughs> okay, so this was a, a young entrepreneur. He had a full-time job. He wanted to go to graduate school and launch um, an internet business. Wow. Okay, so busy guy. Ambitious. Uh, ambitious. Oh, wow. wow. Look at that. So um, here we used the space method. We did a sort. We did a purge. 
And here, he was more chronically disorganized, where he just didn't know. He was busy, certainly, right? Mm -hmm. he, was, he had a lot going on. But he was chronically disorganized, not to the hoarding spectrum by any means. But he just didn't know how to do it. He didn't have the skills. He needed direction. And he really appreciated the learning piece of it. Because as an organizer, one thing that I do, the most important thing that I do is uh, teach people and transfer skills. right? So he really needed the uh, transfer skills. Well, uh, you know, skills. I'm hearing you speak, and I think that you know, hiring someone like yourself may mm -hmm. make you realize more about yourself mm -hmm. uh, through this process of organization. Absolutely. And yeah, I think that you might Absolutely. be able to give them a little bit more than just organizing their closet. They can learn something about themselves. They can better themselves. They can apply it to mm -hmm. other areas of their life. And um, on that note, I mean, you also uh, work not only with uh, people, but you work with companies, you mm -hmm. know, not individuals, meaning personally for their homes, but you mm -hmm. also work with, in offices, but also with big mm -hmm. companies. So you've also organized companies uh, in their storage areas or their mm -hmm. stock areas. Let's see some of that work. Oh, oh wow. wow. So tell me about this client. Okay, so this is a, um, a warehouse in Brooklyn, and they are a furniture manufacturer. And what happens is all those little bins are basically um, uh, screws and things like that. That you know when you're when you um, are missing a screw for something and you need to um, need to get it. Oh. This is where you know you call them and they couldn't find anything, so it was slowing them down. So you know in organizing. Wow, look at um, that. Yeah, that's an what amazing transformation. Yeah. And I like labels. I'm a label person. I, mm -hmm. I mean, although in my house I don't need to label things, but right. <laughs> in my office I do like labels. And, mm -hmm. and I think that especially in the business, you definitely need to know where everything is. And you have brought some samples here. Um, and we're going to segue into the office organization. Right. Um, now this is what you suggest to people. These are some samples of what people should mm -hmm. be. What does this box have inside? OK, so I've brought the basic tools here for a filing system. So paper clutter is one of the, um, one of the biggest problems today in and all, yeah. in offices and homes. We spend, um, on average, 50 minutes a day looking for things that we know we have, but we can't find. What an enormous waste of time, right? I mean, think about 50 time. minutes. Yeah. 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 So what I've brought here today, so on your desk, you want to have an inbox. And then you also want one for, you want to pretend, if you have an assistant, that's great. If you don't have an assistant, you want to pretend, put one aside. And anything that needs to be filed, you put in here. You don't leave it on your desk. OK? Because uh, it's key so, to clear your desk yeah. right. before so you anything. Definitely want to be clearing your desk. Okay. So very, very basic tools, pencil cup. You want to have a highlighter. So there used to be a rule um, a while back. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, uh, touch uh, each piece of paper only once. So no, and one way to do that is to highlight the key information on that piece of paper. Uh, so you're not looking at it again and again. So you want scissors. You want pencil. Like these are basic things. So but if you don't. Fab five. You know how they say, oh, everybody You're should fab. have in their in their in their wardrobe. Closet. You know, women should have a black dress, a black suit, a white mm -hmm. shirt, and whatever. Mm -hmm. You need to have this. These in are your desk. staples. Right. A highlighter, a sharpie, sharpie. A black sharpie. Oh, and, and ladies, it's... you can't be in the office without this. <laughs> <laughs> Guys have razors. We have uh, nail polish, of your course, scissors. a scissor and a letter opening. A letter very, opener. Sorry. very important. You'd be surprised how much it slows people down not to be able to open their yeah. mail yeah. because, and then the mail gets left behind. Yes. You know, and of course, a post-it for notes post and a staple and your to stapler. keep your papers together. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So here we are with that. Now, going back to the desk in the in the office. Every Friday, I like to clean out my desk mm -hmm. for the for the rest of the week. That's so, so smart. Yeah, because I'm very much with feng shui. I like things mm -hmm. balanced. I like I'm I'm big on lighting. Lighting has to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Do you know anything about feng shui in the office? Absolutely. So feng shui is very important, and I'm so glad you mentioned it because um, clutter blocks prosperity. Mm. We want prosperity. We want prosperity. That's a great right? phrase. Oh. So Put clutter. that over your desk. Prosperity. No clutter. No clutter. So here, um, I brought this box, right? So it's a filing. It's a basic translucent file tote, and you can get it at any office supply store and also um, at the container store. And in your filing system, so I'm going to just 
demonstrate something simple here. Mm -hmm. So right, your so your filing system is like a neighborhood. This is the house, and then this here is the room in the house, right? So this one is banking, and I have um, Citibank in there. In any event, um, so your filing system. In terms of feng shui, you want to make sure there's plenty of room in your filing system for new business to come in, mm. right? That's so I'm doing that right now. I'm going to go back to my office. You need the <laughs> right? room for the prosperity to enter. To, exactly. <laughs> I love enter. it. And enter. so should the desk be facing the door? Right. So, <laughs> so you want your desk to be in what's called the power position. And the power position is the one facing the door. I'm moving my desk. <laughs> so we yeah. are both very busy women, OK? What do you right. suggest? How, how, what would be the perfect closet for Yana and Antula? Right. <laughs> Again, Give me a closet very, example. I don't know if that very exists. personal. You want, you want your closet to be really support how you do you need you know, to how you live. do you need to find things or do you have the patience to look through things no i don't have the patience i don't have the time i agonize need to be able to find things okay. yeah. i need to right. find things i have the patience yeah. to look for them so mm -hmm. that would make us too difficult. Yeah, but do you have the time? No, no, this See, have the time. you don't have the There's time. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. You have no the patience, time. but no time. Time's an illusion. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, so being organized. So find you mentioned things. time. Right. What you about want bags? To be able to find things. Um, That's bags. a good one. That's a good question. Where do you put bags? Yeah, so you want to do top of the closet, or, right? But easily accessible. Okay. And you want to get dividers, right? You don't want your bags sort of drooping over. Dividers? Do they sell dividers, those the they're shelf dividers. Oh. And you, that's a new one. So that they stand shelf up dividers. nicely. Yay! <laughs> totally getting shelf dividers <laughs> for our bags. Right now. Shelf of course, dividers. we could stop We've buying got, bags, yes. but that won't happen. We don't want no. to stop buying bags. No. Okay? no, we do not. And we are not giving those bags away. <laughs> so that's not what we're giving. <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about clothes we don't want. Bags? No, no. <laughs> no, bags and shoes we're keeping. <laughs> because they're vintage. Of course. <laughs> Everything comes back, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Okay, so we got the bags out of the way. What about pantyhose, socks, and things like mm -hmm. that? Oh, yeah. Because you have to be careful where you store those. They, they get ripped. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the pantyhose, I don't know, my pantyhose get ripped very easily. Yeah. What, what do you suggest? And they're very easy to, they easily make a mess if you don't sort of corral pantyhose. Um, so you mentioned the over-the-door um, shoe um, holder. Yeah. You can use that for pantyhose. Hmm. Or something like it. Um, what about those um, uh, the dividers. drawer dividers with mm -hmm. that nice silky? You can. Oh, they have little con compartments. Yeah. They compartmentalize. Uh, drawer there. boxes. What yeah. do they call that those? work? Yeah, drawer uh, drawer uh, dividers. Dividers. Okay, cool. So, what about ties for men? Do you suggest mm -hmm. men hang their ties, or should they roll mm -hmm. them? Doesn't Indi matter. Very individual, yeah. but I, I generally like um, ties hanging. Okay. Right? That's they, better. They, they get a, there's no wrinkling, no wrinkling going on. Going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And what about suits? Special, because uh, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the uh, hangers. So do we need special hangers for suits, mm -hmm. or should we all be throwing out all these wooden thick hangers and get those little thin ones that oh, are those coming slim out? Line yeah, so ones. we can get more room, right? supposedly. <laughs> right. So for men's suits, I always like to use the um, high-quality wooden hangers, okay. right? You want to keep the shape. Um, and for blouses, you can use the slimline. For women, you want to use the slimline. I generally don't use the slimline for men's clothing. Um, I tend to use wooden hangers. So the shirts and, should also be hung on a wooden hanger, not on those really right. thin ones, OK? Right. The velvet ones that are coming out, yeah. All right, and anything that we can do to keep our closets green? What do we do for smelling, for cedar, for moths, and That's things like that? That's a good point, our wool items. How yeah. do we safeguard those? Right. Should we be storing things in plastic, like they're saying, or is that causing mold? Mm hmm Great question. And something about the plastic that you get from the dry cleaners apparently doesn't let your clothing mm -hmm. breathe. Have you heard that? You have to remove the plastic from the dry cleaners immediately. Is that so true? So what's going on with plastic? Let's, let's yeah, talk about let's it. Talk about Go plastic. ahead. We want to hear it. Okay, so you want to remove <laughs> plastic, it. Plastic, yes or no? So the plastic from the dry cleaner is to transport the clothing. Uh, it's not to store the clothing. Yeah, so you okay. definitely want to uh, swap out your clothing, um, swap out the hangers, and take the plastic out right away. All right, so we got, and wool, are we storing wool and comforters mm -hmm. in, in plastic? Do you suggest that, or do you like a fabric container to put them mm -hmm. in? Um, it's a personal preference. Um, just going to a whole different room of the, um, the house, I have a client, she absolutely hates plastic Tupperware. She'll only use glass. Mm. So it's a really personal preference, right. even how you store things. Does but it cause something to bad? Does it, does it ruin the, the textile? The, 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 I mean, does it I've erode not, it or mold it? Or, I've no. not heard anything. I would prefer cloth right. to plastic. Yeah. 
And what do you suggest for mold and, and you know, keeping away moths? Is mm -hmm. it cedar or is it, what are they, lavender, what are they, what do we use on closets? Um, both are fine. Okay. Yeah, you can use satchel, you can use uh, scented, um, um, like little wooden uh, chips or balls or... Right. As long as they're not like mothballs. No Remember moth those? Yeah, moth oh, balls are cancerous. God. Right? Horrible. Those are no longer. That I they don't exist heard. Anymore, That's I don't interesting. Think. I heard that, uh, Naftalini, yeah, yeah. Well, we have <laughs> learned a lot today, ladies. I'm so happy you were here. I love your company. I want you guys back, her? and we are going to tell. We're going to show our audience now uh, a graphic on where you can hire Angela to fix mm -hmm. your closets and your life because that's what's going to end up happening. She's going to be like your therapist after this. <laughs> Angela, tell us where someone can find you. Sure, you can go to akorganizing.com. So akorganizing.com, and everything we spoke about today is on my website and on my blog. There's a great um, search feature, so you can um, put in key terms, you know, keywords and terms, and find anything you want to know, either about closets or kitchens or, you know, all of this stuff. Well, thank you so much. I'm sure that uh, our audience is very happy to hear all these wonderful tips. Abdullah, thank you for bringing her. Thank you, you're welcome. And, uh, guys, I'm hiring you. I yeah, am. we're all hiring her. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching Calimera USA again today. We'll be back for more. Have a wonderful day.